We've got one more act in this section, and he's one of our favorites. He's absolutely fantastic. His name is Javier Harkin. Are you ready? Yeah. Be a second that. Of course you are. Keep that clap going. Clap more. Clap more. And cheer for the one and only Javier Harkin, everyone. Yeah, I speak English. <laughs> yeah, I know. Every time I walk up on stage, I always see someone's face in the crowd look at me and go, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Bet I'm about to feel guilty about something. <laughs> It's nice to be here. Uh, I was on a plane uh, about a month ago, uh, flying home to uh, wherever you think I'm from in your head. <laughs> Pilot comes on the PA system and he says, ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts in case we encounter any unexpected turbulence. And I thought, it's not unexpected, we're on a plane. <laughs> Out of all the places I expect to find turbulence, Plane is number one on that list. <laughs> I mean, you go to your kitchen, open up your fridge, and find turbulence in there. That's fucking unexpected turbulence. <laughs> you just be standing there going, I did not see that coming. Holy shit. <laughs> you have upped your game, turbulence. <laughs> I like it when they leave those, uh, those pianos just out in the middle of stations. It's always a piano. The most unstealable of the instruments. <laughs> Never walk through Lime Street and just see a flute on a chain, do you? <laughs> no one's playing that. I like it when they leave the piano out there because that means that sometimes a professional piano player walks by, stops and goes, I think I might play a little concerto. <laughs> Give everyone a good time for free, all because someone left the piano out there. It's great. I think we should be trying this with other professions, see what happens. Uh, let's get a guy that's on a waiting list for an operation, put him on a table, leave him out there. <laughs> Maybe a surgeon walks by and they're like, yeah, fuck it, I'll have a crack at that. Yeah, okay. There we go. There we go. Lovely to be here in Liverpool. My name is Javier Hakeen. I am a functioning immigrant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here for your jobs. <laughs> what do we got? Wind turbine technician? <laughs> yep. I'll take that. We got barrister? I'll take that. What do we got? Rat killer? You can keep that. <laughs> got your I like you got your Arnie haircut as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the verminator. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. I'm pretty good at stealing jobs, guys. Pretty good. Pretty good. How good am I at stealing jobs? You're supposed to be watching another comedian right now. So <laughs> it's always nice being an immigrant to walk into a room and raise the diversity of it by 90%. That's <laughs> good. If shit goes down, we'll just meet in the corner, all right? <laughs> we'll just find our way to an exit and be like, did any white people follow you? Yeah? <laughs> come, quickly. No, you're not with him anymore. The revolution, the revolution has come. <laughs> yeah. It's lovely being, being back doing this. For a while, I thought, no more comedy. That's gone now, so I was going to have to turn to a life of crime, you know? <laughs> Immigrant and all. And then I thought, how am I going to cry? And I thought about it long and hard. And then I decided, moped gang. That's what I was going to do. Join a moped gang. But, you know, due to COVID restrictions, just had to be me. <laughs> moped gang of one. And I thought, with my moped gang, I'm not going to get greedy. I'm not going to go after the gold and the diamonds on the high street. That's when they get you. My moped gang going to stay under the radar. Only going to steal people's fast food. Because <laughs> no one's going to bother calling that in, are they? 
And even if they do, what are the police going to say? Right, who are we looking for? Brown guy on a moped with takeaway. <laughs> You're going to have to let that one go, mate. It's, uh... <laughs> Got neither the time or the resources. <laughs> I heard there was a 19-year-old. I'm guessing it's you. Yeah? Sweet. Fucking 19. Jesus. Do you remember when Amazon was just a bookstore? Yeah? I remember when it was just a fucking jungle. Yeah? Yo, oh, fuck, I'm feeling old up here. You know when you feel old? You feel old when you hear someone much younger than you bitch about how old they feel. That's when you feel old. Like last week, I overheard this fetus. Yes. <laughs> Just pitching and moaning. I can tell I'm old now because I don't have those young people conversations they have. These young people are always going on about tonight. Young people are obsessed about tonight. They're always like, hey, what's happening tonight? What's the plan tonight? You coming out tonight? Where are we going tonight? We're going out all night. Tonight's the night. Young person conversation. Because when you're old, you don't give a shit about tonight. Because <laughs> when you're old, you have to worry about tomorrow. <laughs> old people spend all tonight just worrying about tomorrow. They'll be like, what's wrong? And just be like, fuck, it's coming. <laughs> it's almost here. Even if you try to go out the young people, you can always spot the old person. Because young people will be at the bar at midnight taking shots as they do, just going, woo, yeah, I'm having a great night. Old people are taking those same shots going, what the fuck am I doing? I've got so much shit. I have so much shit to do tomorrow. What am I doing? This is such a bad idea. And notice for a young person, if a young person's got nothing to do tonight, it's the worst thing in the world for a young person. They'll be like, I've got no plans tonight. I'm going to top myself. <laughs> Whereas old people, if an old person has nothing to do tomorrow, oh my God, that is the sweet, that's like heroin for old people. <laughs> oh, having, being old and having nothing to do, to, oh, that's so good. Old people brag to each other about it. You watch two old people talking. Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fucking hate you! Oh, I could tell I'm right because I could feel all the old people in the room fantasizing right now. Just like, oh, if I had nothing to do tomorrow. Oh my God. Fuck. It'd be amazing. Let's find out who we got in the room. Couples in the room, make some noise. Couples? Single people, make some noise. Yeah, listen to that optimism. Yeah. <laughs> Every couple has got a deluded single friend, and they've been single for a while, and they'll be like, if you're this person, don't be this person, because they're like, you know what, I've been single for a long time, but what I've realized is, in this game of love, I am just a special jigsaw piece, <laughs> and I've just got to find my other piece, and when I find them, we're just going to fit together like that, and it's going to be beautiful, just like that. That's how we're going to know. We're just going to fit together like that. It's quite beautiful. And any person in a relationship will tell you, that's not how it works at all. It's much more like when you get any two pieces and just fucking mangle them together. Yeah, that's not pretty, but that's a real relationship right there. That's, that's how it works. Ladies, if you are with a man, ladies, if you're with a man, you deserve a medal. Because let me tell you something you already know. Men, we're fucking idiots. We are idiots. You know this already, but what most women don't realize is, the longer you're with the man, stupider he gets. <laughs> Nothing you can do about this. Longer you're with him, stupider he gets. It's science. It's time plus age equals <laughs> Ladies, you know, this longer you're with the man, stupider he gets. Like, especially when it comes to what he thinks you're going to find sexy and spontaneous and romantic. <laughs> Like, think about the first times, right? He was putting in the effort. There was poetry, chocolates, flowers, foreplay, for fuck's sake. <laughs> he was wooing you at the start. And then a few months or years roll on. You guys know this scenario? Both wake up in bed together. He wakes up before you. He's got an erection. He looks over at you in bed and thinks, I think what I might do. 
I might just roll over there. <laughs> and just poke her in the ass cheek. <laughs> with my erection. <laughs> Show her she's special. <sighs> yeah, my little princess deserves it. And we roll... And we roll over there, and ladies, you ever been woken up by that gentle, like, the fuck is that? Holy sh <laughs> we are so stupid. We think you're going to wake up happy. We think you're going to wake up like, oh my God, it's not even my birthday. Holy shit. Why you spoil me, honey? We honestly think, it's like, you, when this happens, look back at our face. It's like, you know when a cat brings you a dead bird, and they're like, I thought you'd, I thought you'd like this disgusting gesture. Look at all the guys right now. They're all going, yeah, that's my move. That's my, that's, my, that's my move. You are clapping that too loudly in front of your mum. <laughs> Ladies, longer you're with the man, stupider he gets. Ladies, if you live with your man, you've definitely spent a Saturday afternoon just watching him move around the house going, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> the fuck is he doing? He looks very determined. He seems to have a good idea. You ever just watch him move around the house being more useless in one room after the other? He's just walking around like, yeah, I think I might go ruin something in this part of the house now. Uh, 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 can he fix it? Can he fuck? Uh. We constantly need your help. We need you. Need your help with everything. And that's why you hear those stories sometimes of very old couples and they'll be like, they're always the same. They're always like, you know what? They're a hundred year old couple and then she died. And then a week later, he died as well of a broken heart. No, he didn't. That cunt starved to death. In a house full of food. They'll be like, where'd you find the body? Middle of the kitchen, right here. Look at that. Food everywhere. So men, you got to step it up. you got to step it up. One thing you got to do, fellas, one thing you can do, I don't care how much money you make, where you are in society, fucking, if you're going down, fucking be happy to be there. <laughs> be happy. If you're going down, there's enough self-consciousness going on down there already, okay? No woman wants a half ass man down there, okay? No woman wants a, like, should I, should I, should I, should I, should I? <laughs> do you want me to, should I? Can I? <laughs> fellas, if you're going down there, fucking be happy to be down there. Be enthusiastic. <laughs> Guys, you should be eating pussy like you're destroying evidence. <laughs> and the police are at the front door like... <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Some ladies laughing, some faces are going, that's disgusting. This is Liverpool. <laughs> you take that fifth filth down to the world. <laughs> Mum's face is looking like, oh, I'm not so sure about this comedy <laughs> night right now. <sighs> so, you can probably tell from my accent by now that uh, I am from uh, Australia, New Zealand. I'm from New Zealand. Uh, people can't tell the difference between the accents. Uh, but when I do say I'm from New Zealand, everyone goes, oh, all blacks. Fucking all blacks. Yeah, we love them. They do the haka before every game. Oh, the haka, yeah, yeah. They know they're going to do it. It's tradition. They do it before every game. I just think it would have been a bit weird the very, very, very first time they did it. Apropos of nothing. Imagine that coin toss, right? You're going that way? You're going that way? Anything else? Uh, actually, we prepared an item. <laughs> like, I don't look like I'm from New Zealand. Guess that's because I'm mixed race on top of that. My dad's Latin American. My mum is Chinese. Uh, this is what you end up with. <laughs> A bit like the first time you make cookies. Like, shit, oh, I don't know how these are going to fucking... <laughs> It's a lot to deal with. Latin American Chinese grew up in New Zealand, now living in the UK. So if there are any racists in the room that want to tell me to go back to where I came from, just please be specific. <laughs> uh, are you the shoe girl? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, when I first got here, I needed, some, uh, I needed some new shoes. I went to this shop called Boots. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, yeah, you got me. Stupid tourist. Thought he could buy himself some footwear in a shop called Boots. What a fucking idiot he is. I was in there for ages. Eventually, the lady comes up and goes, hello, sir, can I help you? And I was like, yeah, where are the shoes? She was like, uh, this is a pharmacy? Ha, 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 ha. And she goes, 
I was like, why the fuck would you call a pharmacy boots? Doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't call a bakery hammers, would you? She goes, sir, this is boots, all right? This is boots. <sighs> if you want shoes, try office. <laughs> and I said, you're fucking with me now. <laughs> I'm supposed to walk into office, am I? Office, and ask for shoes. Office. Office sounds like they sell laptops. She goes, oh, no, that's curries. <laughs> Guys, thanks very much. I've been Harvey Hakeem. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Javier Hockey everyone! Bye.